Welcome back to the Transform Your Mind to Transform Your Lives radio podcast and television show. I'm your host, Life Coach Marina Young, and sitting in the guest chair today is Dr. Bill Cole, co-founder of Cellular Health Accelerator. And we are going to be talking today on the topic of gut health, how to prevent a leaky gut. Welcome, Dr. Bill. Thank you, Myrna. Uh, pleasure to be here for sure. Yes, um, yeah, pleasure to be having this conversation. As I mentioned, when we were um, you know, off the air, I have a little bit of experience with the topic of leaky gut um, because I went through a couple of uh, Dr. Mark Hyman's um, uh, trainings on leaky gut, talking about probiotics, talking about how some of the food that we eat um, goes through the gut lining and the, the, the gut brain barrier and things like that. So I'm a little bit, um, uh, you know, um, uh, have a little bit of knowledge on this topic. But I think that one of the things that we're going to be doing, we're going to be, you know, talking about more than diet, we're going to be talking about sleep and, and, and um, stress and things like that on the gut. So um, I'm going to enjoy learning a little bit more from you on this topic. So welcome Wonderful. again. Thank All you. right. <laughs> so let me give you some, a little bit more information on Dr. Bill Cole. Like I mentioned already, he's the founder of the largest functional medicine group of its kind, the Cellular Health Accelerator Program that helps people to feel well and age well. He has already helped to transform the lives of thousands and have spoken in stages across the nation. Dr. Cole noted that recent research has shown that people used to think normal aging is actually caused by cumulative cellular damage that is causing premature aging. Stress, poor sleep, unhealthy diet, and environmental toxins can lead to problems at the cellular level. This knowledge inspired him to create and launch the Cellular Health Accelerated, Accelerated Program. This five-step plan is designed to help people increase their cellular energy and to prevent a leaky gut. So they can get through their days feeling healthy and strong and have the energy they need to activate their own natural, natural healing processes. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So we're getting down to the cellular level. So, <laughs> so Dr. Bill, um, as an introductory question, um, can you share with us your journey to becoming an expert on cellular health and gut health? Sure, I'd love to. Uh, back in 2001, I had already been in uh, my own private practice for you know, over 15 years, and I had taken on a partner who was uh, one of my best friends. And this man was a picture of health, Mirna. Uh, he uh, was a national level mountain bike competitor, and he took great pride in you know, not only talking the talk, but walking the walk truly one of the healthiest people I've ever known. He never really deviated from uh, what you would call a health program. Well, mysteriously, uh, he started to lose his health. Uh, he was actually training for a mountain bike event and he noticed that his energy was starting to wane and it progressively got worse. And he was hiding it from everybody at the time because he, you know, he took great pride in his health. And uh, as I said, and it was an embarrassment for him that he couldn't figure out what was happening with him health wise. And then it was uh, really just two days after 9-11. Uh, that was on a Tuesday. And then he showed up, up at my house on Thursday and he said, we need to talk. And I said, what's going on, man? And he's like, well, I, I've been hiding this from everybody. I, I've been developing these issues health wise and I'm getting worse. Nothing's helping me. And you know, I thought when he said he was sick, I thought he meant just like he had the flu or something. But the way he described it, it was, you know, it had progressed into brain issues, into gut issues, anxiety, uh, panic attacks, sound sensitivities. I mean, his life was, it eventually got to, this was a year into it when he had come to my house to talk to me about it. Well, over time, it progressively continued to get worse to where he became uh, nearly bedridden, uh, oh, entertained. Wow. Yeah, entertain thoughts of suicide. Uh, every you know, doctor after doctor, test after test, nothing was helping him. He, you know, he's a health expert himself, and he's trying every natural thing he knew to do. Every supplement regimen just continued to get worse. 
And then finally, this uh, really brilliant endocrinologist asked him a question. He said, have you ever looked into mercury? And mm. he, said, yeah. he said, I thought it was mercury. He said, then I had a blood test done and it came back negative. And he said, well, the blood test won't show that. You need to do this other test called a urine toxic metal test. And uh, he did the test and mercury was off the charts. Wow. And so this endocrinologist asked him, he said, uh, did you have any work done on your teeth about the time that you started to notice that your symptoms were developing first with energy? And Dan kept a training, his name's Dan. He kept a training diary. He went back and looked, Myrna, two days before he had these symptoms, symptoms he, had, right. he, had, he had had silver fillings drilled out of his teeth. Wow. And the endocrinologist said, that's what's going on. You were exposed to years worth of mercury wow. in, in literally seconds. And that mercury went up into his brain. Uh -huh. And here he was treat, trying to treat his thyroid, his adrenals, his gut, all of these other issues. When in reality, it was this accumulation of mercury up into his brain. Well, I started to watch my friend get his health back by dealing with that issue. And then something else happened that really was the icing on the cake. He, I'm sorry to make this so long, but it just goes oh, into the okay. whole thing. It's a thing. great story. <laughs> uh, he, had, uh, he was really getting his health back three years into it. Him and his wife got a phone call on Christmas Eve. Uh, his wife's best friend, her cousin who lived in Florida, uh, her and her husband were tragically killed and they left, they left two seven-year-old twins, a boy and a girl. Well, the boy had been, the boy had been vaccine damaged. Uh, he had uh, developed these symptoms where he couldn't hear like, he was on the autism spectrum. He couldn't hear any type of loud noise without running into a corner, covering his ears and screaming like, you know, he was being injured. Mm -hmm. And they were the godparents. My friend and his wife were the godparents. So they agreed to take these children in. And the doctors said to, about the boy, his name's Dylan. They said, uh, Dylan's never going to be, quote, normal. He's never going to mm -hmm. go to regular school. He's never going to be off his medications. And Dan mm -hmm. said, you know, I know what mercury did to my brain. He said, yeah. I, don't, I don't necessarily accept that, right? And so he wow. put Dylan on the same program that he was on to restore his health. And today, both of them are completely healthy. You would never know that Dylan ever had a problem. He wound up graduating wow. college, right? So uh, that was an eye opener with me, right? It was like, wow, like here I have a friend who through no fault of his own lost his health, Tried mm -hmm. was trying to do everything right. And mm -hmm. he wound up losing his health. And then you have this boy who was told that there was no hope for him that his, mm -hmm. brain, his brain was forever damaged, right? And to watch him come back to complete health was the really the eye-opener, the punch really to the solar plexus for me, making me realize that yeah, I loved chiropractic. We had one of the largest chiropractic clinics in the state of Pennsylvania, if not the country. Mm -hmm. uh, but it really geared us both towards this idea that there are other things happening uh, from a cellular perspective. In his case, it was the brain cell, right? His, both him and his adopted son. Mm -hmm. And, um, and that's what got us on this journey. And that's where we are today where, you know, we're, we're trying to restore health by restoring cellular health. This is life coach, Randy Young, host of the transform your mind TV talk show, radio and podcast. I want to invite you to tune in every Sunday at 6 PM for live TV on PTWWN TV. And on WDJY 99.1 FM in Atlanta every Wednesdays at 5 p.m. As a sponsor for the Transform Your Mind radio, television, and podcast, your message will be heard to a worldwide audience of over 50 million homes. So become a sponsor and take your business to the next level. Okay, a couple of um, uh, circle backs on that. Um, I actually heard about the mercury situation um, from Tony Robbins. Mm. Tony Robbins had a similar story to your friend mm -hmm. where, um, you know, Tony Robbins is high energy, you know, can, can be on stage, you know, 15 hours a day, four days a week. And then he had this, this problem and um, same, same thing where um, uh, they found out that it was mercury, but his mercury was from eating a lot of tuna, I think. 
right. that's where he got yeah, it from. Happen too, yeah. Yeah, he got it from fish. But basically, um, almost the same process of elimination that um, uh, that happened with the mercury. But the real question I want to ask you is: so when the mercury seeped into from the teeth of your of your friend into his brain, um, did they get to his gut at that point, or this is just cellular we're talking here now? Yeah, right. So, well, we have to understand, first of all, that the gut is made of cells. Our whole body is made of cells, right? Every part right. of us, every tissue, organ, and gland is made of cells. So it always goes back down to that cell level if we're talking about health. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that's where health comes from. That's where disease begins at that cell level. But we, we also, it would be important to know that when we're talking about silver fillings, that you know, that those silver fillings are called amalgam fillings, and they are composed of 50% mercury. Right. Uh -huh. So they're they're constantly leaching. Uh, some people can go through life and it's not that big of a deal. Other people, because we're as different on the, the inside as we are on the outside, it can severely impact their health. In the case of Dan's health, it was his brain health. But as it relates okay. to the gut, our brain and our gut are connected. Right. They're connect. They're connected over the longest nerve in our body called the vagus nerve. The vagus nerve. OK, right? so people can if they can maybe associate it with this, like if if somebody had to give a talk in front of a thousand people, most people are going to get nervous from that. Where do they feel that nervousness? It's in their gut, in right? Their so gut, this right? emotional stress can cause butterflies in our gut. It might even it might even uh, make us have diarrhea or something like that, right? And so it, it can really impact <laughs> true, us. True. That's a brain thing. And we also know that Parkinson's disease today, some of the research is showing that being a brain disease about 70% of those patients have a history of damaged leaky guts. Leaky gut. So mm. there's this gut brain connection. And with my friend, he had no, and never had any issues with his gut. But once this happened with his brain, now all of a sudden he couldn't eat certain foods. He would have sensitivities and his, you know, he was mm. blo bloating all of the time. Uh, and okay. he had, you know, a, a alternating bouts of constipation and diarrhea. So his gut was severely damaged, but it was what happened upstream in his brain that in caused his brain. it. Yeah. Right. Wow. Yes. Can I give Good. you an analogy in that regard? This what was is, that? Can I give you an analogy in that regard? Sure. Uh, sure. This, this will help people really cement this, what we're talking about. But, you know, the analogy we utilize is that if we have somebody who has this river that's flowing by their house, uh, they might start to see the fish in the river die and their solution might be to put more fish into the river. <laughs> but if the problem is 20 miles upstream where there's a chemical company dumping, let's say mercury into the river, yeah. we can change the fish all day long. If we don't get upstream to where that problem's coming from, we're really only treating symptoms, right? Right, right, right. That's what a lot of people are doing is they're dealing with just the gut or they're, and there may, the problem may be in the gut, but it may be upstream right. too. Right. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, that's a good analogy. But yeah, but um, everybody knows if the fish is dying, there's something there that's killing them. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> Not necessarily right there. It may be upstream. That's right. That's right. But you know, when something is happening in our gut, we don't always think that it's coming upstream from our brain. Right. You're right. We, yeah. we try to treat the symptom. And um, right. Yeah. So um, so that's a really good path for you to, um, you know, like people say you're curious, why is this happening? And, and that's a pretty good story for you to, you know, make this a, a one of your expert, um, uh, you know, knowledge and to become an expert in. So, um, so the question I had here is um, how does sleep poor, you know, how does stress poor sleep on an unhealthy diet including environmental toxins, lead to problems at the cellular level. So in case of your friend, it was mercury, but um, we're not all going to have, you know, the mercury filling. So I'm assuming there's some other issues that lead to so cellular, um, you know, problems at the cellular level. So can yeah, you explain for sure. that? Yeah, sure. Um, you mentioned stress first, right? And I think something that's really important to understand is if you ask the average person, about stress, what do they think of? They think of emotional stress, right? Mm -hmm. That's like we're, we're maybe marital problems or work problems or financial problems, but there's really three types of stress. It's physical, chemical, and emotional. 
but like I, I can't begin to tell you the amount of people that have told me over my my uh, professional life that my health was never the same ever since I got a divorce or, or ever since I lost my father, right? So we can understand that type of stress for sure. But then there's other people that have physical stress. They maybe have been in an automobile accident and they'll be, they'll be able to say that their health was never the same after that. And But then toxins are the big one, uh, Myrna, where you have um, this you know, onslaught of chemicals that we're dealing with daily in our lives that are creating the really the damage to ourselves, but we're finding out more and more that they're even doing things like turning on our bad genes. You know, You're everyone kidding. might have genes wow. of, yeah, we, ge genetic weakness or ge genes of uh, susceptibility, but they need to be turned on. And some of these stressors are coming from the fact that we are encountering so many toxins. I just was reading recently, the Environmental Working Group looked at us, they did a study where they looked at uh, American women and they found out that American women use about 12 different beauty products. And in those 12 beauty products, they identified 168 different toxins. And that's wow. just in the beauty products. That's not the cleaning products. That's not the food we eat, the air we breathe, the water we drink, all the plastic chemicals. So, you know, when we talk about stress, yeah, no doubt that being under emotional stress all day long can impact you health-wise. It can deplete you. It can start mm -hmm. to wear you down. But these other types of stresses, and in particular toxic stresses, are really at the heart of what we're seeing today in, in terms of these unexplainable type of illnesses. Um, sleep is, is really uh, well understood. We know that that's where, when we rejuvenate, right? That's when our body repairs itself. And if mm -hmm. we're not getting adequate sleep, which is pretty common in our society, they're not gonna be repairing the way that they should. But there's also something called the glymphatic system. Most people have heard of the lymphatic system, right. but the, the glymphatic system is really an accumulation of different vessels that help cleanse our central nervous system, meaning our, meaning our brain in particular. Mm -hmm. And it's really active at nighttime and it's considered to be most active when we're sleeping. So what it does is it cleanses out the impurities in our body, but if we're not getting adequate sleep, that can impact, impact us. And remember that connection between the brain and the gut. And the gut, um, right. Yeah. And then also uh, you mentioned the diet, right? So right. sugar, 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 that's a big one. The average American, <laughs> the average American over consumes sugar. I always tell my clients that in 1900, the average American family consumed five to 10 pounds of processed sugar in a year, in one year. Today, it's 152 pounds per person, right? And we wow. know- it's, and people say, well, they don't use sugar, but a lot of them are not realizing that it's in most everything we eat or it's buy. From the grocery store, yeah. Right? You know, it's really interesting. It's funny you should say that. But um, I stopped drinking honey in the morning with my because I, I, I one of my drinks in the morning is is um, uh, apple cider vinegar and honey. So I stopped drinking the honey because I'm trying to lose weight. But what I replaced it with was a was a was a tangerine. And this morning, for some reason, I checked my blood sugar after I had that tangerine. And I'm thinking, what's going on? And, and sure enough, you know, that has a lot of sugar. So you're right. <laughs> I replaced the honey, but I, I, I put another sugar, you know, yeah, uh, but I mean, thing it, on it. <laughs> it, is a, it is a natural sugar. So you are far ahead in that regard because it's combined with other things. Yeah, for sure. But um, okay. yeah, but then beyond the sugar is the fact that we are consuming these things that we call bad fats denatured okay. fats, mm. corn oil, vegetable oil, canola oil, fat attracts fat. Well, the cell membrane is made of two layers of fat. So whenever we eat bad fats, like the corn oil, the vegetable oil, the canola oil, it has an affinity for the cell membrane. It gets lodged in the cell membrane. It'll kick out your good fats, meaning your omega-3s, your healthy omega-6s, and it replaces mm -hmm. them with these inflammatory fats. And then we mm -hmm. wind up creating chronic inflammation at the cell level. So there's two examples. Is that how diabetes happens too, correct? Yeah, for sure. Because with right, diabetes, right. you create a barrier to insulin getting into insulin. the cell. You become, right. you become what's called insulin resistant, right? Right, right. That's, mm -hmm. just, that's okay. inflammation of the cell. Uh, and and you, then you mentioned about uh, toxins, and I, I've gone into detail a little bit about that for sure. Okay. Yeah, it's interesting that you talked about the beauty products that um, I've heard it's some of the 
the, um, uh, you know, people are talking about, you know, no chemicals in, in, in makeup and foundation. And um, it's, you know, the, you know, the sunscreen that we use and, and things like that, you know, they're always telling women who are pregnant to, you know, be careful with their cleaning products because there's all these, you know, chemicals in the cleaning products. But yeah, it's, it's, um, and then they started talking about the, the toxins from 5G. So you're right. There's, there's, yeah, there's, like there's you mentioned the, the uh, sunscreen. That's one thing that people should be aware of, even in that regard, that 93% of Americans have a chemical in their body called oxybenzone. Oxybenzone is what's in sunscreen. Oxybenzone is a known cancer causing agent. So wow. here we are, here we are trying to prevent cancer. Cancer, right. Chemical on us that contains a carcinogen, right? It's, it's, and then you mentioned about, you know, the other things that you were talking about there made me think about plastic chemicals. I mean, in our beauty, and there's so many of these in beauty products, BPA and phthalates. And do you yeah. know what- Even what, in our water bottles, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. right. Water and bottles of plastic, right. Mm -hmm. Scientists refer to these as hormone disruptors. They yes. also they also refer to them, you talked about wanting to lose weight, right? They talked about, they, they refer to them as obesogens. These plastic chemicals that get in our body are making us fat. Yeah. And, and, you know, yeah. that's just another example of how they're, they are really creating this cellular issue, hormonal issue, however you want to describe it. It is yeah. a hormone issue if the hormones, like you mentioned, diabetes can't get into the cell to do right. their job, right? right. And if, right. You're fat, right. if your fat burning hormones can't get into the cell to do their job, we have millions and millions of American women primarily, but more and more men who can't lose weight no matter how much they exercise, no matter how little they eat. Well, that, yeah. that's called weight loss resistance. That's a hormone problem, almost always related to accumulation of toxins. Wow, wow, yeah. wow. That is interesting. Um, and how do you, is there a test? I think you mentioned somewhere that these things don't show up in the blood test. Does it? No, uh, I mean, you can, yeah, you can get tested for toxicity uh, okay. with, with a urine toxic metal test, but as far as the leaky gut, uh, there really is is no specific test for that, but there are over 1,600 medical studies. They mm. refer to it as intestinal permeability. We're calling it leaky gut. It's the same thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. People can understand that when something yeah. is leaking, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, thank you for that. Um, I'm pretty sure that anyone that's listening that you know um, uh, putting on the sunscreen, including me, I don't even know why I need it, but I put on. <laughs> <laughs> I put on sunscreen, right? Yes, there's, you know, that's pretty important. Um, but all right, so we've talked about, you know, um, uh, you know, the, the, the problems with sleep, diet, we talked about mercury, we talked about all the problems, but I know that you've got a solution. And part of your solution is your program that you develop that's called Cellular Health Accelerator Program. So can you tell us about that and um, what does that do to help solve these um, issues? Yeah, I would, that's a great question. Can I preface that though, by just giving a little understanding of the cells, right? Okay. We're, I said, we're made of cells, every tissue, organ, and gland. People can think of the, our cells as like bricks in a building. Mm -hmm. the, the difference is though, that our bricks, our cells are alive. <laughs> our cells are the smallest living part of each of us. And okay. because they are alive, that's where all of the function in the human body comes from. And okay. by that, I mean this, that if your heart's beating, it's your heart cells that are actually doing the beating. If okay. a person is making thyroid hormones, they're called follicular cells. They're in the thyroid. They manufacture and release hormones. Mm -hmm. We see a lot of people, uh, Myrna, that have low energy, right? Mm -hmm. It's a chronic problem in our society. Well, that's a cellular problem. They're not making enough gasoline in their cell. It's called ATP, right? So no matter what is happening, symptom-wise, no, mm -hmm. no matter what's happening uh, disease-wise even, it's always traceable back to something gone wrong at that cell that's level. Not, right, okay. So if a person wants to be well, they have to fix their cells. And right. what we do is we, we approach it uh, from something called the five R's of cellular healing. R number one, they a, the person has to remove the source to the damage, right? In other words, we've talked about sugar. We've talked about mercury. We've talked about all of these different toxins. 
our number one is we can't keep throwing gasoline on a fire and expect to put the fire out. So we've got to get these things out of our lives that are damaging our cells. We've got to identify them and then remove them. And then our number two is you have to regenerate the cell membrane. That's what becomes damaged. And there's going to be certain techniques that we use like consuming healthy fats, because remember I said it's made of fat. We want to consume healthy fats like extra virgin olive oil, like virgin coconut oil, like grass fed beef and wild salmon, these things that are natural fat wise, they're going to help heal our cell membranes. And then our number three is we have to restore energy. A person who barely has enough energy to make it through the day, how are they going to heal, right? They have to have a reserve that they can dedicate towards that healing process. Well, if you barely have enough that you come home from work and you can't even imagine working out or cleaning the house or, you know, cooking a big meal, you don't have a reserve to heal with. So you could tell that person, well, you're low in energy, drink more coffee. But nobody has a lack of energy because they lack coffee, right? Coffee, right, right, we right. Need, we need to understand why the cell is not producing enough of that gasoline called ATP. And there's mm -hmm. natural things you can do to help restore that. And then our number four is you have to reduce inflammation. So there, like we said, sugar is driving inflammation. We've got to eliminate those, those sources and we've got to give the body what it needs in nutrient wise. It'll help it to reduce that inflammation. Our number five is reestablish methylation. I won't get lost in the weeds here. Most sick, sick people don't have enough or what are called methyl groups. They're carbon and hydrogen groups. Without them, they can't detoxify. They can't make energy. They can't heal. So we have to reestablish that methylation and we give them certain uh, certain nutrients like methylated uh, folate or methylated B12 that'll help them to methylate. Okay, so that that's pretty good. So um, this is a program that you um, uh, that you is like a you know a program that you offer to your clients and you walk them through these stages. Or yeah, we have a works? we have a coaching program where we are basically just. Um, as the name would imply, we're just coaching a person back from where they are, teaching them along the way the things that they need to understand, that, that arming them with the, with the tools that they need to, to be able to heal. And, you know, okay. it's not a healing is not necessarily a, a one month thing. It could be six months or it could be a year. But I, we feel that our job is to give them the information that they need to be able to finish that job. Okay. And I'm assuming that the first stage in this is where you're removing the source. Um, so you, you check their toxic, toxicity level and find out what the source is, whether it's, um, whether it's you know, stress, the different types of stress, whether it's sleep deprivation. And by the way, um, I, I had an interview with someone recently and I found out that our brain washes itself at night. Actually, the first time I actually heard that, that the, the brain washes itself um, during deep sleep. And um, if you you don't if you don't if you're not getting your brain washed, then that's where you have the problem. So now you're you're saying exactly the same thing is that um, you know part of sleep is when you're washing the brain. So yes, yeah, so I just learned that. So that's great. Um, so if you, you you understand and eliminate the sources, that was the first part, and then you start with your healing. Yeah, so, um, uh, you know, what I was saying is you, you help them, you know, establish the source, and then you eliminate the source, and then you regenerate, um, and then you restore, um, and you re reduce inflammation, and then you reestablish. So, so that's a good program. And from start to finish, how long does that last? Well, our program is four months long, but understand that some people can take one to two years to heal, right? So like I was saying, our, our, our main mission is to really teach people, you know, how is it that they got sick and what do they need to do to get well? Uh, our ancestors used to do things that were out of necessity and we've lost those things, right? We've, we live in this world today where we have, you know, uh, all 24 hour access to food, bad foods too, right? Right, right, right. And so we, we, we kind of got to get people to unlearn certain things and then relearn things really that, that will help them to achieve this health, you know, goal that they're after. Okay. So that's awesome. So, so let's get to the leaky gut part. Um, yeah. 
<laughs> so um, you talked about the, you know, whatever comes upstream comes into your gut. Your gut is made of cells. But um, how can people understand or what are the symptoms of having a leaky gut? I can just best describe that as poor health. Uh, Hippocrates, who is the uh, father of modern medicine, right? He said over 2000 years ago that he believed that all disease begins in the gut. Yeah. Well, there was a time in my life where I didn't believe that. I, I thought that, was, uh, that couldn't be true. But the longer I've done this over three decades now, I realize that most everything that we see has some basis, at least some connection to an unhealthy gut. And yeah. we also, I believe, we also, I believe that too. I believe that yeah. too, because, you know, how do we, how do we support this being by eating? Right. Yeah. So it comes yeah. through the gut first. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. And we, we know things today, like the, this microbiome, this, this accumulation of bacteria, right. This environment mm -hmm. in our gut made of bacteria, the number of bacteria outnumber the cells in our body by at least 10 to one. Wow. Right. And we're, we're understanding that our gut plays a role in, you mentioned weight loss, right? It plays a role in brain health. It plays a role, 80% mm -hmm. of our immune systems in our gut. Mm -hmm. So if you want to be well, you have to have a healthy gut. The mm -hmm. things that we do in our lives though, and understanding that our gut is supposed to act in part as a barrier. It doesn't allow the bad stuff in. It doesn't good, allow right. the good stuff out until it's ready to be released. Right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But because we are exposed to things like antibiotics, not only through medications, but through the foods we eat. And how about yeah. the, last, the last year and a half? How many people have been dousing themselves in antibiotic soap, right? Mm -hmm. These things that get into our body that were designed to kill living things, well, guess what they're doing? They're killing living things. And that's our microbiome, our good bacteria. Yeah. And I, I read recently where one bout of antibiotics, and I'm not telling people not to do antibiotics, but I'm saying there's a price to pay. One yeah. bout of antibiotics can wipe out 30% of our good bacteria. Just yes, one and it takes out. two years to come back. I right. know that for a fact myself. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah yep. especially when, they, when you go to the doctor and they give you these antibiotics that kills everything yeah. instead of a specific one. I think what they call them, staph or whatever. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it, it really leaves us uh, more prone to more infection down the road. Right. And then once we get infected, what do they do? More antibiotics. And, yeah. and that's just part of it because what about like chlorine in our water supply? Chlorine was invented to kill bacteria. Yeah. And it does, when it gets in our body, that's what it does. But here's the big one. And this is something that most people are not aware of. And that is the active ingredient in product called Roundup, right? The herbicide that yeah. a lot of people use in their lawns and that is so endemic in our food supply because they're yeah. being used on farms. Well, the active ingredient in Roundup is called glyphosate. Glyphosate research shows four seconds after it touches the lining of your gut, it begins breaking it down. Wow. And so what leaky gut is, is where the lining of the gut has developed tiny microscopic holes. And now things like undigested food, bacteria, viruses, toxins are escaping into the bloodstream. Well, the response from that is your body will go on high alert, right? And the immune system has to destroy these things. And problem with that is every meal, every day, the immune system on high alert, eventually it goes haywire. And it begins yeah. looking at other parts of our body that are normal as abnormal and then we wind up with autoimmune disease. Wow, that is a scary proposition, but I know what you're talking about. As far as the Roundup, I think a lot of people are aware of Roundup now because you know, there's, a, there's a lawsuit that's going around with, yep. with Roundup. So um, yeah, um, uh, it's, and uh, people were saying that they can't believe that they're still selling that stuff. But they're still, you, yeah. can go, you can still go to Home Depot in those places and buy that, even though mm -hmm. it's proven to be you know, very detrimental. And yeah. um, you know, people have their kids playing on the lawns and the, you know, whatever. 
um, uh, there is a, um, a saying that says you should walk on grass. So, you know, sometimes I would go walk on my grass barefoot <laughs> and yeah. that's how you get all those things in you. So you're trying to do good, but then you're ending up with all these, 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 these toxins and yeah, things like it, that in your body. To take it a step further there, you know, when we're talking about the majority of our roundup is going to be in the foods that we're eating because it's so utilized in the production of food. They, they actually are making crops that are called Roundup Ready now. They've been changed <laughs> genetically so that they can accept large quantities of Roundup. I think I heard that. I yeah. think I heard that too, yes. And, and then they'll do the craziest things like they'll like with wheat, they'll spray it with Roundup when they don't even need it because what it does is it dries the wheat out. It makes it, it, makes it uh, able to be picked earlier. So they're using it to desiccate or dry out the wheat just for you know financial reasons like wow. it's it's just really yeah. nuts i didn't even remember that i'm just thinking about your lawns now right you're yeah. right they're using it as a pesticide for food and it's you know gets into your body wow so wow yes all right so um so what can we do to prevent that other than you know one of the things i told you i came into this discussion learning that there's certain foods that you eat that actually passes through the blood brain barrier, you know, I mean, like the, the gut, you call it blood brain barrier, you know, like they say not to eat barley or, or some other foods, but um, uh, other than nutrition and um, uh, how can we prevent this leaky gut? Yeah, the, the first thing that we have to do if we're using, utilizing my five R's or not what we utilize called the five R's, mm -hmm. um, that number one thing is going to be that source thing, right? So we want to make sure that we're consuming things that are going to aid in the development of good health, not promote bad health. Right. Okay. And so that's, that's really important. And this is why if somebody can afford to go organic, they really should do that because there's here, here's what I always say. If the average apple, for instance, has, it's been identified that has four different, uh, pesticides, the average apple, okay? Mm -hmm. If we could separate those pesticides and put them in little vials beside our dish, and every time we took a bite of apple, we had to take a little taste of the pesticide, we would never do that. <laughs> we would say, we would say that's craziness, right? I'm, I, I, who would yeah, do that? Yeah, but, yeah. but when it's in the apple, somehow we're not paying attention to it. Like no. it's not, it's invisible. Not conscious, right? right. Not right. conscious of it, right. Mm -hmm. so, but the good news is this, our bodies have an ability to deal with a certain amount of that type of stuff. But if, and so what I'm saying is if we pay attention enough and we eliminate what we can, like mm -hmm. aluminum in our deodorant, things like that, these heavy metals, those things can make just a giant difference in terms of the body's ability to be healthy. So that's the first thing. And then the second thing is going to be eating whole foods. Like I couldn't say it any more plainly than that. Like we, God gave us certain foods that we should be focusing on. Man-made foods that are pre-packaged and that are full of sugars and bad fats. We need to eliminate them from our existence as best we can. Doesn't mean you can't enjoy the pizza every now and again. Doesn't mean you can't enjoy your holiday. But to do this every day, the average American consuming these foods, it's what's damaging our guts, right? So we need, we need to really focus on whole food and that, that's gonna be uh, you know whole grains. It's got, not gonna be the processed grains. It's gonna be foods that have natural sugars. Like you mentioned the tangerine, like that's gonna be far better for, for you than some ta tangerine flavored drink or something, right? <laughs> you're you're going to be much better off in that regard. So yeah, whole foods is, is going to be where it's at. But then I would also tell you that when it comes to things like our meats, you do want to look at grass fed meat. You do want to have wild salmon versus farm salmon. The example there is farm salmon, they live, they're, they're actually raised in pens on the edge of the ocean. And they're fed this really unnatural diet, most of the time, very high in plastic chemicals. Mm. And it, tur it turns their meat gray. And no one's going to eat a gray salmon, right? So they want that orange. Well, mm. they, have to they have to dye it orange. And oh, so, wow. we're get right, so we're getting this change in the fat composition and, and 
and the like, and we're taking in these toxins. So you want to go wild salmon. You want to go grass-fed steak. You want to go pastured eggs, chickens that are actually allowed to roam in the grass and eat bugs, not kept four to six in a cage where they take their beaks off because they'll peck each other to death. They're given daily doses of antibiotics and a lot of them will develop a cancer called leukosis, right? So Wow. It's, it's just something that is, you know, it's just endemic in our society. So people have to pay attention. If they want a healthy gut, they've got to put healthy things into their gut. Wow. So as I'm listening to you, I'm thinking this is such a great conversation for awareness and bringing people's attention to all the different things. We even talked about the deodorant. You mentioned it briefly. You know, at one point in time, I had to wear national, I had to wear, I had to, um, to use natural deodorant. I had to get my deodorant from a health food store because I started getting cysts onto my arms. Um, yeah. uh, but, you know, I've gone back to the drugstore brand now, but these are all things that, you know, we get chemicals from. And, um, uh, you know, the food, you know, the, the cosmetics, um, uh, the fish, you know, I love salmon, but yeah, I don't always get the wild one. So now I'm going to make sure I get the, so I get the <laughs> wild one because you yeah. you just so plainly explained it. <laughs> yeah. So what I'm so what I'm what I'm trying to get to is now that we've got this consciousness, you know, they say knowledge is not on is not knowledge unless you use it. So um, so let's say someone is in their 60s. Can we make a change? Oh, absolutely. You know, we absolutely, we have most of my, um, I don't want to call it practice anymore because I'm more of a health coach now, but our clientele is largely women who are in their fifties and sixties okay. and uh, even some into their seventies and beyond even. Uh, you're, if you have a body that is breathing, you have a body that is striving for health. That's okay. the way, that's the way we're made. I always okay. tell people this, Myrna, if you have if I, if I scratch you, cut you with a knife, right? Your body instantly starts the process of healing that cut. There is no doctor, there's no researcher, there's no scientist, there's no drug, there's no supplement that can duplicate what you were made to do from the right. beginning, right? So we have, that, we have that working in our favor. There's no doubt that someone 18 is gonna be better off in some ways than someone who's 68, but you still have this, body that is striving for health. What we need to do is we need to stop throwing gas on a fire. We need to create an anti-inflammatory environment in the body that supports health, that supports cellular healing. And then when that happens, because you do have this body that strives towards health, uh, that's what we expect to see. And that is what we see. Okay. So that's good. So that gives us hope. I like that. Yeah. All right, Dr. Bill. So as we, we almost come to the end, so tell our listeners and those watching on TV how they can get access to your Cellular Health Accelerator program, connect with you and, um, you know, on social media or, or, sure. or what is it that you do. Okay. Yeah, they could they can find me on Facebook and Instagram, uh, but they could also go to my uh, website, which is drbillcole.com. Simple enough. <laughs> Okay, drbillcole.com. All right, so tell us more on your website. Um, tell us about your program. Yeah, well, I mean, we have the, generally what we do with our program is that people are gonna watch a video, first of all, where we go into what I kind of just did. And then if it piques their curiosity, they have the availability where they can buy a simple test. It's a urine test that'll okay. show them whether they have this inflammation that's happening at the cell level. It's a, they can do it from the convenience of their home. It takes literally seconds to get the results. Uh, and then we also will send out a questionnaire and then they have the ability to consult with one of our uh, coaches where they are gonna really determine whether this is right for them because it's not right for everybody. You know, the, the person has to come into this thing. Uh, what we like to think of is really positioned in a way that they're gonna be able to benefit from uh, what we're offering. And so, you know, that whole process, it helps us determine whether it's a good fit or not. Okay. All right. So you said that you, there's a urine test. So is that urine test testing for toxins or is it just testing for source or what is it testing for? Yeah, it's actually whenever we have cells that are damaged, they're inflamed. Mm -hmm. Like think, think about if you fall down and you crack your elbow on cement, right? It, the, the response to that damage is what? It's inflammation. 
when our cells become damaged, that membrane becomes inflamed. Well, it makes this byproduct. You don't need to remember this, but it's called malandialdehyde. The more damage you have, the more malandialdehyde you're making. Well, that filters into your urine. So okay. when, you t- when you take your urine and you put it into this little tube we give you, it, there's a little reagent in there that responds to only malandialdehyde and it can tell somebody instantaneously. And it's, by the way, it's over 50 times more accurate than any blood test looking for the same inflammation marker. Uh, and it can tell them within seconds from the convenience of their home whether they have this. And if they do have cell inflammation, they've got to fix that because that's gonna block their hormones from getting in. That's gonna block their nutrients from getting in. That's why so many people, they follow healthy programs. They try to do the right things. They're even taking hormones from their doctor, but they're not getting results. And a lot of times it's because their cells cannot absorb these things because they're damaged. Yeah, sounds like me. (laughs) (laughs) You know, (laughs) Um, all right. I have all this great healthy lifestyle and you know, um uh, the the scales keep still going up and i'm thinking what exactly is going on my yeah, husband did not, tell me that i should go get a herm- home hormone test but i haven't done any of that so yeah i can I'm tell you do, maybe i can I get can that urine you, thing. Just, just, that? At, just at a glance myrna that that the typical female that we see who has those, those issues they're not able to get their fat burning hormones into their cells so losing fat becomes an exercise in futility so, but once you change that dynamic, it's it, it, losing weight becomes really natural. I have a young lady, actually, she's sitting here right now watching this. Uh, she works for me. She was my patient four years ago and uh, she was 60 pounds heavier, couldn't lose no matter what she did. And it was actually fixing her cells that allowed her to lose 60 pounds without exercising one minute. So wow. whenever, you, whenever your body becomes a fat burner instead of a fat store, Definitely. Weight loss, weight loss can become effortless. Right. Yeah. So I'm definitely a client. So awesome. Thank you. <laughs> sure. Sure. <laughs> Thank you. Um, all right. So this has been a very interesting conversation, a very um, educational conversation, by the way. Um, we learned um, quite a bit um, in how to fix, uh, you know, our issues of how to understand, you know, as health is, um, you know, it's um, very important. And, you know, it starts with the gut, goes to the brain. And I love your analogy of, you know, if you see dead fish, you got to figure out where it's coming from upstream. Absolutely. You know, it's, it might not be right there in that little pond where the stuff is, but it's flowing down. So I love that analogy. And that's what you got to find out. What was that? Well said. Yeah. Yeah. And and that's basically basically what we got to find out. Um, uh, Yeah. So, that's great. So, well, thank you for uh, an excellent interview, um, Dr. Bill Cole. Um, uh, you know, the transcript of our, our interview will be on the show page, which is blog.myhelps.us. And this is a good interview to go and check that out because I'm pretty sure there's certain things that, you know, those um, listening on uh, the radio and podcast missed, or even the, what you're, you're watching on TV that you might have missed because. There was a lot of detail in our conversation today. So head over there. Um, I will also have links to Dr. Cole's um, website. So you can, um, you know, just in case you forget, then you also have links um, on there. So I just want to, you know, thank you guys all for tuning in to the Transform Your Mind, the Transform Your Life. Here today, we're trying to transform your mind on the importance of health the importance of well-being, the importance of sleep, the importance of de-stressing your body. I like what Dr. Cole says about, we all think stress is emotional stress, but stress is also physical stress and stress is also chemical stress. We never think about that. Like the the things that we eat or the toxins that we put in our body causes stress. So that is one thing that we can take um, in our consciousness. So um, yeah, so definitely, um, head over to the show page, you know, for links to Dr. Cole's um, website. As he said, you can connect with him on Instagram, on Facebook, and I'm assuming it's Dr. Bill Cole. That's what it is. Yes, Link. yes, yes. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Dr. Bill Cole. All right. Yeah. So you can connect with him on there and um, definitely, you know, start with that test. You know, I'm going to do that. Start with that test myself to see, you know, how I can you know, start letting the, the scale go down instead of <laughs> going up, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know? Okay. So 
Um, I want to invite you guys all to join my Facebook group, which is called Life Coach. And if you're listening to this on a podcast, we'd appreciate if you can rate and um, review as well as subscribe. So thanks again for tuning in. Thanks again, Dr. Bill, for a fabulous conversation and educational conversation. Any last words? No, just uh, look to the cell to be well. Okay, I like that. Yes, I like that. Okay, well, listen, until next time, guys, blessings.